And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm really excited today to talk about this game, Galactic Strike Force. Galactic Strike Force is a game from Greater Than Games. They're the folks who made Sentinels of the Multiverse, a game that I love. Okay, it's a fantastic game. This is a similar game in which you are a ragtag group of mercenaries in space fighting against some big evil empire. Now this box is... I don't know. This gray border, I know it's supposed to be bolt, but it makes the game look a little more boring. I would have taken this picture and expanded it out, but whatever. Is the game exciting? Is it thematic? Let's take a look. In this game, you're going to put three regions down in the middle of the table. These can be random. There's quite a few different regions in the game. Besides the different cool artwork, each region has a special ability on it, and these are contested regions. So, for example, this region here says reduce all the prices in this sector by 10 uh, credits. However, if this sector is overrun by the bad guys, see how the art changes? <clears throat> oh, no. Then it's increase all the price in the sector by 10. So you don't want the sector to be overrun. You're also going to put a bunch of upgrade cards in each sector. Now these upgrade cards are kind of cool and I'll talk a little bit more about them in a bit. Then you're going to pick the bad guy. Now each of these bad guys, there's five of them included in the game. So you can see each of them has a different kind of feel to them. These are the Technoverse Invasion, the Singularity, think the Borg. And here's the one that the game recommends you start with. So we're going to take a look at him for this game. And Barag Threlian Syndicate. Now this is the bad guy. And this kind of tells you some special setup that you'll do for this game. Tells you a few other things that he does. And basically will tell you how he flips over. See, when he flips over, out comes his giant flagships. Each of these guys becomes a giant flagship. And I want to, I, I, I played these guys one time just so I could see this flagship come into play. Hint, it was really, really bad for me. But anyhow, they have special abilities and such. So... The players are going to win by either destroying this bad guy's um, flagship or by getting rid of all the enemy ships on the board. Now that's going to be hard to do because at the beginning of the game, you're going to take ships equal to twice the number of players. So let's say we're playing with four. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. From a custom deck for that, sin for that, that bad guy. So Bar this guy has a, a bunch of, this is a starting mission, has a bunch of ships uh, in his deck. So we turn these over and... Look at all these nasty ships. And so we have to spread them out as evenly as we can amongst the starting positions. So we see three of them have three ships each, and one of them has two ships each. And then the players are going to pick their ships. Now this is where it's fun, because you look at your ships, and each ship has an attack power and a defense power, a special ability that they use when they're a secondary engager. And they also each come with their own deck of cards, which are completely different. So let's say I want to play the Rannick War Beast, which looks like a whole bunch of guys cobbled it together. And actually, what's cool is that's actually the theme of this. It really is a, a bunch of cobbled together parts. And um, so I have a five attack and a one. And then I go through and I look for my specific deck. So here's the Rannick War Beast deck. And each of the decks are very different. They have different kinds of cards in them. And then you'll shuffle these cards and you'll draw four. You're also going to look for your ship, wherever it might be, and each player is going to pick whatever sector they're going to start in. Now, the rounds of this game are going to follow this little wheel thing here, which spells out the word triba. Well, I don't know if it's the word triba, but basically, you have different phases in the game, and each letter corresponds to a phase. So the first phase, T, is the travel phase. That's the movement phase. And the reason these phases are important is because you will have to, each phase of the game, check all the cards on the board. See, for example, this ship here, this enemy ship, the internodal dispatcher, has a T on it. So this says if there are two or more strike force ships in this sector, play the top card of the opposition ship deck in this sector. So if there's two or more of the good guys here, then we will draw another ship and put it into this sector. So you have to check all the things on the board, including the big bad guys, flagship. See, for example, 
uh, on the T here, he says that he'll play the top card of a mission deck. Each of the bad guys comes with a special mission deck which has different missions that uh, players will have to accomplish and do. If they accomplish them, they'll get a reward sometimes, or if they don't accomplish them, something bad will happen. Sometimes it's a card that can go in your deck, like this local hero. And so there's all sorts of missions that will show up. In the case of the Barag Threlian Syndicate, I said they have, a, they have a starter mission, and so players can do that. So players will be able to move from one sector to the other sector unless they're locked down or something else can't happen. Then there's the requisition phase. Each player is going to look at the four cards in their hand. Now, here you can see that the value of each of these cards is 20. So I have 80 virtual credits to spend on my turn. As time goes by and you add other cards to your deck, you will want to take a look at these cards as they go into your deck and see the virtual credits that they give you. The sector that you're in allows you to buy cards in that sector for the cost of those cards. So this one gives you 20 when it's in your hand, but it costs 50. And there's no change or anything in this game. So let's say I had 80 and I was in this sector, I'd be like, oh man, I can only buy one of these cards. You know, I buy the 50, um, or here's a 40. But if I was over in this sector here, I could buy the 50 and the 20 card. And so players are buying these cards. When they buy these cards, they're going to put them on the bottom of their deck. So in the future, they'll be able to draw them. And again, this is the, uh, the buying phase of the game, the requisition phase. So you would look at any R's on the board and any R things would happen at that point in time. Then the installation phase, the I, and you check all the I's. But you would also take any cards you want from your hand and add them to your ship. Now, your ship is going to have tokens on your ship, and we need to explain a little bit about how this works, because the rule book didn't do as good of a job as I hoped here. You have an attack, and you have a defense. So I have five attack, and one defense. That also doubles as the hit points of your ship. So I have six hit points. When I take a hit, I will take it from defense first, and then offense. In the installation phase, you can add more cards to your ship and you put them in the front, like this one here adds one to the attack. And then later on I add another one to the attack. And so I will add cards to the attack here and maybe I add one here that adds two to the, de to the defense. So you can play as many cards from your hand as you want. As you add these cards to your attack and defense, it's possible these cards will get blown up over the course of the game and will take those points back away from your ship. If they're all blown up, then you are what the game calls grounded. But what Vassal says is dead, which will let you do one special ability to help your teammates out each turn while they look at you annoyed because, well, you're dead. But you can still do something in the game. Now, anyhow, after the installation phase, and sometimes there are installation techs that add to the defense and offense. Sometimes they add, go underneath the ship and add special abilities. Players also have cards in their hand called boosts that they can play. They're like interrupt cards that you can play anytime and they do different things. Then there will be a battle. Each of the ships has to attack one of the ships in their sector. Now you can be the primary engager or the secondary engager. The secondary engager means you're kind of being a wimp. You're not going to take any damage. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. But you're helping out somebody else who is a primary engager and giving them your special ability. So, for example, the Rannick War Beast, if he's the secondary engager, um, then who, he has ferocity. And the primary engager gets a temporary plus two attack. So, usually, you'll want to send each ship out as the primary engager. But occasionally, you want to keep a ship you know, from getting hurt. Or maybe you just want to gang up on an opponent's ship. When you attack the enemy ship, let's say we're attacking this Kubrin mercenary, okay? So I added two turrets to my war beast. I have an attack of seven. He has a defense of two. So I do five damage to him. Two of it comes off his defense. So we would change his defense now to a zero. And the other three would come off of his attack. So attack, his attack is now a one. But he attacks us at the same time, so he does four damage to my shields. And my shields are, what did I have my shield set at? I had a shield of three. So he does uh, four attack on three, he does one damage, so one of my defense is gone. And that's how attack works. Now, you're trying to blow up the enemy ships. When you blow them up, good. You get rid of them, and you can see as you hit them, they'll get weaker. You can also see that if they have very large shields, it's going to be very difficult to hurt them at all. Let's say I had attacked this guy with four shields, and I hit him with seven. Well, his shields would go down to one, but he would still be hitting, he'd still be pretty powerful for a long time. Also, 
after all the ships have attacked, any enemy ship in each of the sector that you did not engage in combat somehow is going to basically fly in and destroy the top card of each deck. So when they destroy the top card of a deck, we will flip that card over and it will either give a boost to the bad guys and sometimes they, let's see if we can find some here, sometimes it will turn into an enemy ship that goes out and helps the bad guys. Really annoying. Now, if you let three ships get through and the top card of each station deck is flipped over, then the whole thing is flipped over and becomes the sector becomes overrun. If all three sectors become overrun, the good guys lose. The good guys win, like I said, if you get rid of all the bad guys' enemy ships, or if you get rid of the big flagship. Now that's a general overview. There's other things that go on over the course of the game. There's, like I said, there's different phases, travel, requisition, installation, battle, and aftermath phase, and different things are gonna happen. And the game will play very differently depending on what bad guy you pick, what fleet goes on, and what combinations of good ships you pick because there are quite a few to pick from. Okay, Galactic Strike Force. It has a lot of similarities to um, Sentinels of the Multiverse, really, because it has that same, um, we do stuff in our turn and then the bad guy does stuff in his turn. But there's a lot of differences. This is a cooperative game. You are all working together against the bad guys. There is a lot of variety in this set. Each of the bad guys comes with their own deck of cards, with their own set of missions, and all the different, I mean, there are a ton of these upgrade cards that can be put out there. So the different upgrades that you have available, each ship, each good guy player ship is so very different than the others. And if you want to take the time to read the theme, uh, to read all the different text in the cards, there's a lot of background fluff in the game. And it really does feel like a ragtag group of Space Fairs against the big bad guy. Fantastic theming. Superb. The rule book was pretty good. The Sentinels of the Multiverse rule book was never really that great, but um, the game was so simple. This one's a little more complex, and I, th I think they could have the rules could have been a little bit clearer. For one thing, it's a little kind of wonky on how the rule book explains. There it shows a green symbol all the time for taking damage, and it's it, it takes a while. I had the hardest time, every time I taught this game, to explain to people that Green means red or blue, but blue first. It just was a little, I don't know why that concept just didn't flow very easily. Now, is this game for everybody? Answer is a resounding no. And let me explain why. First of all, the game is incredibly fiddly. I mean incredibly. There is every phase of the game, you have to check. Okay, it's the travel phase. Check to see if there's any T's in the cards. There's probably several. Read those, check on the bad guy's flagship. Check on anything else. Okay, now, now the requisition phase. Check all the R's. Lots of things going on, lots of moving pieces. The ships fly all over the place. All kinds of things happen all the time. Now, I didn't mind this. This is actually fun and very thematic for me, but I know this will irritate a lot of people. It's not a smooth moving game. There's a lot of moving parts and they're moving all the time. Secondly, this game is hard. And I'm not exaggerating here at all. When I say that this is the hardest cooperative game I've ever played, I have not beaten it, and I'm not sure I can. I feel like there's a smidgen of a chance, and I feel like if I play it enough that I could do it. I played a three-player game, and that was a whole lot easier than the first two five-player games where we just got brutalized. It was terrible, terrible, terrible. And we're playing on the easiest settings. And this game has like, oh, you can make the game harder. Now, I've said in the past I played hard cooperative games. Ghost Stories and Yggdrasil. And I never beat Yggdrasil, but I probably could have if I played it more. Ghost Stories I've beaten multiple times. But it's still hard. But I felt like I could beat it. And as the game went by, I was like, oh, 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 it's getting harder, harder, harder. Oh, oh man, we're losing. In this game, it starts out like this. You're like, hey, what's up? And they punch you in the face, kick you in the stomach, steal your wallet. And they say, now try to beat us. Now, as the game goes by, you actually get a little bit better in this game. You get better, you get bigger and stronger as the game progresses. So does the bad guy, but you get bigger and stronger. Uh, <laughs> but it's hard. So if you want to get, <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm having a hard time. I really feel like a lot of people are gonna play this for the first time and just stop playing. Because they'll be like, wow, there's so many moves moving around and we're getting brutal, beat up, you know, it's terrible. Oh, what are we gonna do? So. I think you need to play it a few times so you can see what combinations of ships work well together, what number of players, what are good strategies to take. I haven't figured out any of that yet, okay? So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not able to give any kind of strategy in, in this game. But despite the fact that it's super fiddly, 
despite the fact that it's very, very hard, I'm keeping it because I love it. It's so thematic, it's so cool, and I feel like someday I will beat it. And when that happens, I'll stand on the box triumphantly singing a song. Okay, I'm getting ridiculous now, but really, it's cool. I like the artwork, I like everything about this game, but it's not for everybody. It's for people who like a lot of different things going on in a game and don't mind a very difficult challenge. Realize that going in. And if you like both those things and you love space, because this is space, you will love this. But for everyone else, be forewarned, maybe give it a try first before you get involved in this. I expect there will be 7,000 expansions for it as time goes by, adding lots more variety, but I'm telling you there is a ton in the box as we start. Anyhow, that's Galactic Strike Force, a game that I love, but I hate it at the same time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.